Well, I predicted a pricing war and battle has commenced. You, the viewers, are now vital in deciding the price we will all pay for EV public charging in the future. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Exciting times and a field split with some networks raising prices. Shame on you. Many dropping them and entering the market at super low prices. Well, let's get all the details as we look at the UK EV public charging prices in April 2024 and discover what we as EV owners can do to force prices down. Well, Westmoreland charging is a new entrant. They're throwing down the gauntlet straight away. Now, these are the new Swarco units. They're notable for their absolutely huge display. I thought my Tesla Model S display was large, but this is the size of a TV. The shock, though, is the price straight in at 64 pence per kilowatt hour. Wow. Now, Westmoreland Charging have only a few locations at this time, but all are punching well above their weight. They have charges at T-Bay on the M6 in the Lakes, and Gloucester services on the M5, and there's a new services coming up shortly at Tatton Park on the M56, with planning permission granted for a total of 96 charges. Whoa, they're going to be a mixed ba base of fast for hotel guests and ultra fast for drivers, but they also stand out for the total lack of fast food and coffee chains. No McDonald's, Starbucks, uh, Burger King, anything like that. Nowhere in sight. It's all local produce, local workers, locally cooked on site. It's a real experience. And they have really powerful chargers, 300 kilowatt dual bay. It's not a perfect size. Few cars can take more than about 150 kilowatts in reality, and so they can share quite happily, and those will be more than adequate. This also applies to Tesla V2s. If you share power, you'll get less. So if your car can charge at 250 or 300 kilowatts, make sure you pick a charger that can do that. Make sure you're not sharing that power with anyone else. Well, EV Point hit the headlines for three reasons. This is Euro Garages trading as EV Point. And first of all, it's massive growth in EV chargers. They're aiming to become the largest in the UK in direct battle with people like Apple Green, MFG, and even the supermarkets. For well, second reason, they use the Tesla V4 chargers, which are recognised as the most powerful, reliable, easy-to-use chargers in the world. But the third reason is the price. They come in at 65 pence. And they boldly advertise it. Some of their motorway sites have an illuminated sign, which is clearly visible from the motorway before you even get to the slip road. 65 pence a kilowatt is a good price. Up until recently, they've been fitting their 180 kilowatt chargers. These are also dual bay shared power. They gain a perfectly adequate, but looking a little bit lacking now. Not up to the modern standard, which is going to become much faster in the future with solid state batteries. But now they've gone and done a deal with Tesla and they've agreed to buy an undisclosed number of V4 chargers. So all of a sudden they've upped their game from 150 kilowatts shared to 250 kilowatts dedicated. So the first solid state batteries are supposed to be arriving shortly, next year maybe, and that means faster charging, so sub 200 kilowatt chargers are now heading towards becoming rather redundant. Take heed, Instavolt. Well, V4 chargers are 250 kilowatts and upgradable, future proof. This shows forward thinking. See, V4s are claimed to be upgradable to at least 350 kilowatt, but some, including me, suspect that are uh, actually aiming for one megawatt. Now, for those of you who think it's absolutely crazy, you'll see from the pictures that the Tesla in the States is installing mega charges for charging the semis, as Americans call them, lorries over here to us in the UK, and they look remarkably like the V4. So do we have a situation here where the mega chargers are rated at at least 750 kilowatts and some suspect they can go up to one megawatt, and the V4s that we EV drivers get are only limited to 250? That's because Tesla have a policy, normally ever having just one charger. So that would make sense from that philosophy. You have one charger, this capable of upgrading to one megawatt of power. Yeah, not kilowatts, this is a thousand kilowatts. One megawatt of power, and then just throttling back wherever because we don't need the one megawatt at this stage. Well, looking at Fastnet, uh, they're also on the rampage, they're installing everywhere, just opened a new location in the northwest. We did go down there and film. It's the first one in the northwest. They offer a list price of 69 pence, no fuss. And it also offers membership. I'm going to come back to that membership in a minute. 
Last latest installation in Haydock in Northwest has pretty much the iconic colouring. These are 300 ki kilowatt dual bay chargers and they actually have CHAdeMO connectors. So all you leaf owners, you can head there for fast net for charging. Price is great 69 pence, but if you're a regular user, absolutely without doubt get the membership. £9.99 a month drops that 69p to 48. If you charge twice a month, this is an absolute no-brainer. Also, they feature auto charge. So if you register your car on the payment card, then when you arrive, you can do what Tesla drivers do. You pull in, you plug in, you walk away. You come back when it's finished, you unplug and you drive off. There are no cards, no contactless, no RFID and absolutely no apps. Just nothing to do. Plug and go. They call it auto charge. Designed to make your life simpler. Well, Tesla is now the biggest disruption in the EV charging field. It's the Tesla superchargers with an aggressive pricing structure. Well, first, it's a huge network and growing dramatically. Second, they have the very latest future-proof V4 chargers. I think these are the best looking char... Well, I don't know, maybe not with the Swarka units. I'll come on to them in a minute, but they've got massive television-sized screens. Anyway, healthy competition, but these are really attractive units. Third one is the cable. This is a bugbear of mine. Far too many cables are heavy, unwieldy, inflexible. Tesla have the lightest, most flexible, with the V4, one of the longest cables you'll find in the country. So no matter where your charging port is located on your car, a Tesla V4 cable will always reach. So when it comes to Tesla pricing, it prices all of its supercharger locations individually, depending on a number of factors, like the price they have to pay for electricity, the demand. Uh, my local one, for example, is Charnock Richards on the M6. That has just two tariffs. As I speak today, it changes. The peak is 55p, the off-peak is 43p. However, I do have plenty of others nearby. So if we go to Trafford Park, this one is actually an open to all Tesla supercharger. There they have actually five different tariff periods. So starting at midnight, between midnight and four o'clock, 24 pence a kilowatt hour. Well, between four o'clock in the morning and 11 o'clock, you don't have to get up early, 32 pence a kilowatt hour. Between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m., 51 pence. This is peak time. Then off peak in the evening is between 6 and 10, that's 41 pence. And then from 10 through to midnight, you're back onto the 24 pence. So they have tiered charging depending on the time of day. Now, nationwide prices vary between about 55 peak and 24 pence super off peak. So, is that real? Well, that's the price that all Tesla drivers will be paying. Now, another uh, site nearby, it's Trafford Centre, a Tesla supercharger there, and they have the older V3 chargers without the contactless terminal on the screen. So you need to use an app to activate it and pay for the charging. You don't need membership, you just need a free app, you download it, you need to add a payment method because there's nothing on the, um, on the chargers, and once you've got the app, you can just use them. So use them with contactless card or payment on the, on the app. Current price at Trafford, off-peak, between midnight and 4 is 32 pence. Between 4 and 11, 43 pence peak. Between 11 and 6 p.m. is 69 pence. This is one of the dearest in the country. Between 6 and 10 is back to 55 pence. Between 10 and midnight, 32 pence. So as a non-member, this is a turn up and charge. So almost any car in the country can charge here using CCS2 plug. Sorry, Nissan Leaf. So if you've got Hyundai, VW, BMW, whatever you got with CCS2, just turn up and charge. You will need the app. So instead of 24 pence, you're now paying 32 off peak. It's still ridiculously low rate for a non-Tesla driver. And even at the peak, it's 69 pence. And that is quite competitive. Now, just to give an example of one other difference, each location is priced individually. Look at Exeter, currently peak time is 55 pence. Uh, and that's dearer than uh, Manchester at this time, which is 51 pence. Off peak 42, that's dearer than Trafford again. However, do you need to look around because all of the charges are individually priced. So down in Exeter, four miles away, is Darts Farm. That's a supercharger. As I speak, instead of 55p, you pay 45. There's still V3 charges, 250 kilowatts, just cheaper. As is the off peak, which is 39 and against 42. What I would say to you, if you ever go to Exeter Services, it's a little bit busy, head down to Darts Farm. It'll be cheaper and probably quieter. And the food's a bit better. 
Now Tesla do offer a membership totally voluntary. It's $10.99 a month. For that, you'll get a discount around about 25%, right the way down to the prices that we Tesla drivers pay everywhere we go anyway. Now, my golden advice to you is if you charge twice a month with Tesla as a non-Tesla owner, it's a no-brainer. Now, I know there are some Tesla haters out there. I know some of you are vehemently against Elon Musk. But if you charge regularly, you'd be a total numpty to go and pay 79 pence elsewhere on a matter of principle. Tesla's offering membership for £10.99 a month, and you can get charging right the way down to 24 pence a kilowatt hour. Swallow your pride, just sign up, get the cheapest charging you'll find anywhere in the country and sit in your car ranting and raving about what a prat Elon is, if you like, but take him for every penny you can. I say to everyone, memberships are a good thing. It's an absolute shame we have to do it, but financially it's a no-brainer if you charge twice a month at any particular location or network. Tesla has the UK's largest ultra-rapid charging network in the UK. They instable claim the largest number of UK for rapid and ultra-rapid, grant them that, but most of their chargers are 50 kilowatts, and the fastest they do, 160 kilowatts. Tesla don't do anything that slow. By the way, uh, these are soon going to be redundant, so in terms of size, you're more likely to come across an ultra-rapid charger at a Tesla supercharger than you will with an Instavolt installation. Now you may have noticed already that all, all the networks featured so far are charging way less than 79 pence a kilowatt hour. This is where you come in. If you don't like paying 79 to 85 pence per kilowatt hour, stop using them, full stop. Where there are plenty of alternatives, you do not need to pay silly prices. Let's use people power, as a little bit up more on this shortly. Let's look at Ionity. And this falls into our feature networks with the price of 74 pence kilowatt hour, just squeezing in under the UK average, which is 79 pence. But these are very powerful, they're usually 350 kilowatt chargers, and they offer plug and play for a very few limited number of cars, such as VWs. Um, they're usually featured if you buy or lease a new EV. So if you buy one of those, you're highly likely to get some sort of terrific charging deal, which can drop the price of charging for the first year down to as little as 30 pence. Please check if you have such a scheme and then please use it. This will dramatically cut the cost of your motor. Now they also have a membership. So although the 74 pence is not extortionate, um, it features in this review. They have a membership. That membership currently is half price. It's £5.49 a month. Well, that gives you an extra 18 pence cut in the rate, which brings it down to 56 pence. So they have good coverage, almost doubling in size over the last year. They now feature 186 active chargers, 27 locations, 16 new locations currently building, which could add another 100 or two chargers this year. Still far too few, and not the best list price. But also note that Ionity is now standardised using a central contactless payment method. So when you go to an Ionity charger, you're likely to find that each individual charger does not have a contactless terminal. Instead, you'll find somewhere nearby, very close, uh, a single contactless terminal. The principle here is you park your car in whichever bay you can, you can find, that want to use. You note the number of the bay, it'll be on the charger. You then go to the contactless payment terminal. It will ask you first to select the number of the bay that you've pulled into. You then apply your contactless card and it will say, accepted, please start charging. So you go back to your bay, plug it in, and your car will start charging. So it's one contactless terminal for as many chargers are, as are installed. Seeing as we're talking to a few people, it's actually a little bit confusing for some people when, when they first start using it, but once you've used it once or twice, it's, it's actually second nature. Now, Apple Green Electric also just about squeezing in with 77 pence. This is a relatively new EV charging network. It's reported and advertised to be totally separate from the Apple Green Group. And that one is a fossil fuel based company, absolutely massive, multi billion dollars, but based on oils. They have nice chargers, a uh, lot of these now the American made, 180 kilowatt dual bay chargers. They also install a good number of them. My local charger at Charlotte Richards has eight dual bay chargers, so that's 16 bays. So well done, Apple Green. 
Uh, the price is 77 uh, pence per kilowatt hour, just falls under the 79. But if you decide to use the app, there's an extra 4p to come off that. That's about 5%. So that can bring the price down to 73 pence. I used these recently. They are simple to use. They operate at a reasonable speed. Instructions are very clear. Display, very informative. Well, if you enjoyed this video or learning from it, please subscribe. It makes a huge difference. And if you have a smart TV, you too can like, subscribe and even leave comments directly from your TV. Uh, if you look at the chapters, select how to like and subscribe from a smart TV chapter, you can go straight there. But maybe wait till you get the end of the video, it's there anyhow. I'm just going to touch on people power and, and this, this video is critical. You see, the average price for charging is an extortionate profiteering 79 pence a kilowatt hour. Well, the best public ultra rapid charger price, as we just found out, is 24 pence. And the best home off-peak charging rate is Octopus, uh, which is 77.5 pence. So 79 pence is pure profiteering. And they do it because they can. Now, looking back, shops followed exactly the same route. They were overcharging little corner stores until supermarkets appeared 40, 50, 60 years ago. And they hit the high streets and they quickly began to drive down prices. They wanted to encourage people to shop there, so they dropped their prices. People started going there. Supermarkets got bigger, more people shopped there, and prices came down even more. It was people power in action. As people stopped using the smaller stores and used the bigger supermarkets that cut prices, this actually drove them to become the size they are today. That exact same principle was copied with petrol pumps at supermarkets. At one time, supermarkets didn't have petrol pumps. You had to go to a Shell garage or a BP or an Esso, the oil giants, and they had a monopoly and they charged a really extortionate high price. Then years ago, supermarkets decided that one of the ways they could get customers into their stores was to offer cheap cut price petrol and diesel. So they started. And once they started, the others copied. And that started a price war between the supermarkets. They were not competing with the likes of Shell, BP and Esso. They'd already beaten them before they started. But they started a price war between themselves. Tesco against Asda, against Morrisons, against Sainsbury. And very quickly, they all got down to a very low level, stabilised at a really low price. And some of the petrol stations and supermarkets now claim they're heading towards actual cost price. Uh, but they don't mind, you see, because it's not meant to make them profit. It drives customers into their stores where they do make a nice profit. Now, the oil giants, the BP Shells and Essos, they were forced to drop their prices too. And today, they are only a little bit dearer than the supermarkets. Now, this is what we want to see with EV charging. Most charge 79 pence at the moment because they can. It is pure profiteering. They don't have the competition. It's on its way. Sainsbury's. Let's have a look at Sainsbury's. This is one of the first of supermarket giants to install and operate their own EV charging network. Not one that's bought in or leased out, but this is their own. They favour the Kemper units and they're now open to business at 75 pence. Small difference, 4p off that price, but that's a discount already and not the 79 pence which Morrisons and Asda are currently charging. So, promising start for Sainsbury's. Kempar chargers really neat, powerful, reliable, most of them above 150 kilowatt. These are great chargers. Well, these come in at a price underneath the likes of Osprey, who also install identical Kempower units. And this must sooner or later be noticed by even non-technical customers with EVs. Why is Osprey charging a 79p when Sainsbury charges a 75? Well, Tesco at the moment just seem to be lagging behind. They don't really know what they're doing, where they're going. Morrisons, they're on a bit of a dry, but they're still at 79 pence per kilowatt hour. But they're owned by the MFG, the Motor Fuel Group, who do charge 79 pence for EV charging on their forecourts. If anyone out there expects to just sit back and wait for prices to fall, it's not going to happen. Prices will fall when we, the EV drivers, choose which chargers and charging networks we use. Getting back into chargers, EV, 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 Evil Eyes, I call it. They're installing rapid, ultra rapid chargers nationwide, but the pace is slowing down noticeably. They sneak in at 75 pence, no memberships, it's 75 pence. So technically, it's in this video for pricing, but it's right on the limit. Their chargers are nothing special, 75 kilowatt commonly, and locations mostly singles and twins in car parks. EV, EV, evil Eye needs to pick up or pack up. They'll not survive like this. 
Oh, BP Pulse. Whoa, yeah, special mention here. And entering the list unexpectedly is BP Pulse. Yeah, I know they charge 85 pence per kilowatt hour, so they should be blacklisted altogether. But they have one redeeming feature that we can exploit. They have a membership. Now, going to touch briefly on membership. You see, BP Pulse have a cracking deal, but many people complain about, quote, having to join and pay monthly. You don't have to. But if you don't join, don't complain about the price because you can reduce it. So BP Pulse offers you pay nothing for the first month. It will drop the price of, of units from 85 pence down to 60 pence, so 69 pence. But here's the kicker. You pay nothing for the first month. After that, you pay 785, which is a good little rate. But they also will give you a nine pound credit into your account each month for the next five months. So. You pay £7.85 for the second month, you get £9 credit, so on. So if I got it right, you pay £7.85 a month, they put £9 in your account for the first five months. That means for six months, you're actually not paying anything at all. Every penny you pay for membership, you get back and a little bit more. Yet yeah, you get the discount rate of 69 pence for the full six months. Now, I would say even if you're dead against membership, swallow your pride. If you charge a BP Pulse already, then become a BP Pulse member. Here's three reasons why. First, you pay £39.25 for six months and you get paid £45. Second, you can charge a 69 pence per kilowatt hour for six months. Third, you are sending a message to BP Pulse saying you won't pay 85 pence, but you will pay 69. Even if you cancel after six months, you've sent that message. And we're not doing this. There are far too many people who just get in their EV, go to the nearest charger or find the nearest charger when they're running low and just use it and pay whatever it is. Why? Let's do the maths. Here you go. Monthly membership price varies between £5 and £11. That's it. Let's call it £10 a month. It's usually less. The savings vary between 20 and 30%. So let's pick 25%. And that represents about 20 pence discount per kilowatt hour on a 79p price. So. If you charge once a month, take a 50 kilowatt hour charge, you pay £10 membership and you save £10. So there's the first start. In fact, if you join as a member and only charge once, you have to pay £10 and you'll save £10. It's free. But once again, it sends a massive message to the networks. Now, if you charge twice a month, each taking 50 kilowatt, you'll pay the same £10, but you'll now save £20. Do three charges a month at the same network, you're going to save £30 a month. That's £360 a year. Now, if you're not interested in saving £360 a year, absolutely fine. I don't ever try to convince anyone. I just merely point out that you're wasting £360 a year. If the only reason is down to pride, well, I don't like memberships, then yeah, you're a numpty. Also, if you have a company car and you get a payment card, you don't even have to pay for charging yourself. Please, please, please still choose the cheapest method you can find, because again, it will send the message. Well, we'll also extend this to Tesla open to all superchargers, which many of them are now. I'm aware there's a very significant number of Tesla and Elon Musk haters out there that are vehemently against anything to do with either of them. But if you use Tesla superchargers as a non-member, off peak at 32 pence a kilowatt hour, or as a member off peak at 24 pence a kilowatt hour, instead of GridServe or Osprey at 79 pence per kilowatt hour, purely because you hate his politics or think he's a threat to the entire world and should be sent to Mars, you're also an absolute numpty. Well, normally I would move into GridServe or Instabolt or Osprey at this stage, several others, even Shell Recharge, but this pricing video is designed specifically to help you cut the cost of your charging using public chargers. And now it's also trying to cut the overall price of all the networks throughout the UK. It's a bold and daunting task, but people power can move mountains. So anyone charging 79 pence or more and not offering a way to reduce that is just blacklisted. So no mentions. I refuse to promote profiteers. So the list of networks worthy of features in our monthly UK EV charging pricing guide just got remarkably smaller. So in future videos, I can devote more time to them when I've explained why we're cutting a lot of them out. Uh, right, in case you think I've forgotten about various charge cards like the Octopus, the Electroverse, RFID, I haven't. This is an absolutely massive subject, massive number of cards, cards available, Scotland specifically. Uh, 
and it's sufficiently uh, large for that to be the subject of a separate video. I'm currently doing some research on that and that video will be out later this month. But the principle stands, if you have to use a third party card or an RFID to get a sensible price, they need to change that. Well now just a final quick note on EV adoption. A lot of people worry about buying an EV. They're not sure what's going on. They hear a lot of rumours, a lot of myths, a lot of misconceptions, most of which very negative and totally out of date. But seeing is believing. So if a petrol car driver pulls onto a motorway services like Charlotte Richard or Exeter, they might see 16 bays for Apple Green and 32 for Tesla and 24 for GridServe. That's a huge number of charges they will physically see when they get out of their car and if they were to look over at the petrol garage, they'll find a trivial, what, 10, 15 pumps. Well, this actually works away at a subliminal level. If every service station they go to has got two, three or four times as many EV chargers as petrol pumps, this actually gets through to people. Uh, it's unconscious. And so the next time someone says to them, I'm not going to buy an EV because there aren't enough chargers, they might one day turn around and say, well, are you sure about that? Because I actually saw about 50 EV charges recently. Exeter, there's about 30 in John and Richard, and most of them were empty. So I'm not sure that's true anymore. You see, seeing is believing. This is a visual indication that will destroy some of the myths and misconceptions that are flying around far better than me or you trying to tell them. OK, we're going to cover how to like, subscribe and leave comments if you watch this video on a smart TV. Now, different TVs might have different methods, but all allow you to do this. On mine, I've got an LG. If I pause the video while I'm on the YouTube channel, I get this screen. Using my TV controller and the central wheel, uh, my second icon uh, is the like button, third is the dislike, but the first one is titled channel. And if I select OK on that, I get this channel uh, logo come up, icon come up, and it's got the option there to subscribe or go to the channel. Many people did not know that was there. I haven't used the comment icon, so you're going to have to figure that one out for yourself. Anyway, to everyone now, thanks for watching. I'm Dave. If you have enjoyed or learned from this video, please give us a like. It does make a difference to a smaller channel like ours. Even more vital to us are subscriptions. YouTube heavily favours and helps channels to grow if they have a large number of subscribers, which we do not have yet. If you want to help us grow, please subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it sends a powerful signal to YouTube that people actually want to watch our videos. They'll show it to more people. Now, if you are a loyal and long-time viewer and you've never subscribed, oh, please do so now, please, right now, just click the subscribe. We have a growing number of Patreon members who support the channel. Uh, for details, check in the description down below. But Big thank you to all our existing Patreon members. You are listed below. I'm Dave.